A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Pretty horrendous afternoon across uh, particularly the Aberdeenshire, Murray area, uh, down through Tayside. Um, heavy rain, um, a strong uh, wind-driven rain at that uh, coming in off the North Sea, feeling distinctly cold. And uh, we've seen surface flooding and um, just a downright rotten sort of a Sunday afternoon across particularly the northern and northeastern portion of Scotland. Further south, we did see um, less in the way of heavy rainfall. We've seen more in the way of showers. The winds were the most noteworthy feature. We've seen a gust of 88 miles per hour on the Isle of Portland uh, this afternoon and, um, you know, 70, 80 miles per hour over the higher parts of um of Scotland so windy it was very wet as well and fallen on top of already saturated ground it, somewhat of 800 millimeters of rain has fallen during the month of October in parts of Cumbria what a turnaround after recent months where we've seen uh, abnormally dry conditions and in no 2009 um you know it's not like 2009 there's there's a uh, several aspects including uh, the fact that we've got a La Nina as opposed to back then we had a, an El Nino. Um, it's interesting to see this kind of um, extreme or heavy rainfall event and um, it's going to be interesting as we go towards the second half of November and into the, the month of December to see what type of pattern we get because like I've said uh, I'm pretty convinced that um, this pattern is going somewhere and it is going to a cold solution. Maybe I'll be wrong and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll be the first one to hold my hand up and say that I was wrong. But um, it certainly is uh, very interesting indeed. Something I've not made mention of but I will uh, in tonight's video is the Madden Julian oscillation which hasn't been particularly favourable. It's also been um a, a fairly uh, weak um indicator in, in in the last couple of weeks but uh, there may be some subtle changes there may be some progression in the rosby wave wave train as we go forward and keeping an eye on that area of high pressure up over canada because um you start getting the the you know the wesley's strengthening and um the progression of the man julian oscillation from uh, Africa through the Indian Ocean and into the continental maritime region uh, there may be indications that that area of high pressure may get kind of pushed to the north as we go forward here um, but certainly low pressure firmly firmly in charge of the British air airspace at this moment in time uh, more rain falling on um, saturated ground and it will certainly turn things around um, as we go forward here, what you what we'll start to pick up on is the fact that the area of low pressure kind of starts to fill, lifts to the north. We've got the uh, high pressure out over the Atlantic, sticking its nose into southern Greenland. With that area of low pressure kind of uh, drifting towards the east northeast into Scandinavia, we're going to pick up a, a chilly north to northwesterly airflow here. That's going to be um, bringing in a, a fairly brisk northerly airflow. Uh, plenty of showers associated with that so we're going to see snow showers uh, as well over higher ground and over the next several days what we'll do is we'll continue to see that taking place the area of high pressure you notice here to the west of the uk eventually starts to topple its way into the uk so we start to lose the northerly winds but of course if you open up the ice bars you drop the winds clear skies out we're going to see an increase in frost potential towards the middle and the latter half of next week. Then that area of the, the very same area of high pressure kind of drifts to the south. We'll start to see areas of low pressure run over the top of that area of high pressure and we'll, we'll start the process over again, get systems coming in from the Atlantic across the top of the UK. Um, always a little bit um, drier uh, and more settled, slightly milder as well across southern areas closest to the area of high pressure. That by this stage, this is uh, by by next weekend, um, it kind of is drifted off to the southeast. All the while, we're seeing a trough, colder air, 
uh, stormy conditions across the eastern half of the United States. Keep a close eye on that, by the way, because if these areas of high pressure, or this one in particular, drifts further south, opens the door to more low pressure across the Atlantic and into the UK. The reason why I'm saying we keep an eye on the, UK, the, the US and the colder pattern is the fact that we may start to pull in a kind of colder flow and, and a colder uh, air mass across the Atlantic here. Of course, the, the Atlantic is very warm compared to normal and any chill that comes off Canada uh, will, of course, moderate as it crosses those uh, unusually warm waters. But it's going to be interesting to see how this pattern evolves. It does look as if we're going to maintain a, a very active pattern uh, in the you know the kind of medium range term. So this, of course, by Monday, 8th of November. This is one model run, of course. So we're going to see these uh, these um, yeah, very uh, kind of particular solutions varying somewhat area of low pressure, stronger, further north, further south. We're going to see the variations, but it's interesting to see how the pattern um, may evolve as we go forward here. And at, at, at this stage, this is by Tuesday the 9th of November, you notice here the uh, area of low pressure up near Iceland at 968 millibars. High pressure, 1029 uh, down between the Azores and uh, Iberia. But notice here that we've got a flow coming in, arguably coming out of the Baffin Straits around Greenland and uh, around this area of low pressure here. Uh, uh, off the west coast of Iceland, dragging in some uh, particularly chilly air that may may have more of a wintry flavour, despite having a westerly component crossing off the Atlantic. Here, we may start to pick up a colder flow. Also worth uh, paying attention to is the collision between milder air from the subtropics getting cycled around that area of high pressure off Iberia. So we're pulling in warm air from the subtropics, but we're dragging in cold air from, um, from Greenland. What does that do? It collides and we increase the strength of the jet. So we may, as we go towards mid-month, start to see the areas of low pressure that will continue affecting the UK become deeper, more potent. And it's going to be interesting to see that as we go forward here and you can see a next frontal system pushing across the the, the uk with a cold um a wesley area sharif theme on the back side of that frontal system so it's going to be interesting to see what takes place here this is the northern hemispheric view um of the gfs and uh, i think this is up to date so the 31st which of course is today as we skip through the loop, what you'll see is we've got features. This is North America, Greenland, the UK, stuck under a deep area of low pressure uh, at the moment. We've got an area of high pressure, if you notice, um, sandwiched in between uh, the trough in the eastern half of North America and the western side of Europe here. As we go forward here, folks, what we're going to start to see is the pressure building uh, between these two twin uh, troughs and this is exactly what I think is going to start to take place as we go forward over the next two to three four weeks what we may start to see is if the Manjulian oscillation and its energy translates of course from the tropics into the northern hemispheric pattern we start to see pressure building further north and this is all the kind of building blocks of a, a type of pattern that we may see uh, during the first half of the winter season overall so as i continue to skip through the loop you notice the pressure strengthening the high pressure over hudson bay that then starts to push up towards greenland and you get the overall idea we start to see the troughs kind of um, areas of low pressure dropping into the trough uh, invigorating the trough deepening it dragging in cold air from a northerly direction both over Eastern North America and over Western Europe here. So it's going to be interesting to see that here. We notice here that off the Madden Julian oscillation, um, of course, the yellows and the reds represent um, suppressed uh, sinking air. We see the blues representing rising air. You notice here that we've got an active uh, Africa at this moment in time. But as we go from uh, today through week one, 
and through week two, you notice here that we start to shift the oranges, the sinking air, to the east. And also we're starting to see the blues representing a uh, rising air, enhanced convection, starts to shift into the, uh, the continental maritime area, so around Indonesia. That progression eastwards, folks, of that energy, that wave, um, essentially with time, it alters and affects the upper air pattern further, further north. And it's going to be interesting to see as we go forward exactly how this pattern may evolve. Like I say, I might be wrong, but it's certainly going to be interesting as we go forward here. Finally, looking at the 2 meter temperature anomalies for the month of uh, October, very warm if you notice across the top. This rep this is a classic representation of a northern block type pattern. Warmer than normal, Scandinavia all the way across uh, through Siberia. Notice here, very, very cold uh, over eastern Siberia at this moment in time. And also notice the ribbon of warmer, uh, colder than normal, I should say. Uh, extending from uh, Italy, the Balkans, and through the heart of Asia here. That is very interesting to see. Also notice here, uh, very, very warm compared to normal across uh, much of Canada, particularly eastern Canada, cold across Greenland, and uh, across the UK, it's been a warmer than normal period as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I keep saying this at the very end of every video. Uh, keep it right here. Uh, exciting times, I think, to come. Please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'll be back on what day is today? Sunday, so I'll be back hopefully on Tuesday with more information. Bye bye.